Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and today we're going to be hopping into a mobility focused yoga class. So the main focus today is going to be the hips, but we're also going to be working on hamstring mobility, shoulder mobility, so very, very full body, very complete. You do not need any props for this practice, but as always, if you have blocks or a strap nearby that you want to use, it's always a great idea, but it's not necessary, so that means that anyone can join. Um, it's still going to be a yoga flow, a vinyasa flow style of class, just with a lot of mobility drills infused in it. So whenever you're ready, we're going to get started on the mat in child's pose. And quickly, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment after this video. Thank you. All right, so getting started in our child's pose, we're going to do a, quite an active child's pose. So reaching the arms forward, and really trying with each breath in to find a little bit more length through the arms, through the spine. And with each exhale, you're pulling the hips back, but we're also squeezing the knees into the chest. So, so you can visualize what I'm talking about. Imagine you're in a tuck handstand, and this is your tuck handstand position, and you're trying to compress everything together, but at the same time, you're finding length through the arms and through the spine. And we will take five breaths here. Good, super active. Keep squeezing the knees into the chest. And slowly we will make our way forward into a rounded tabletop. So tucking the tailbone under, chin into chest. And then let's move into a few rounds of cat and cow. So mobility of the spine. Inhale to drop the belly, pull chest through. Exhale to round, pushing the mat away. Inhaling to open. Exhaling to round, one vertebra at a time, following your breath as you move. And let's do two more. And last one, breathing in. Exhaling to push the mat away. Next inhale, let's come back to a neutral spine. And we're going to turn the fingers out, so just getting a little bit of movement going in the wrists, moving side to side. I always like to warm up the wrists pretty much in the beginning of any class because we're always on our hands at some point, whether it's plank or even just downward facing dog. And let's come back through center. And then if you can, let's turn the fingers so they're pointing towards the knees, tuck the toes and start to rock slightly back and forth. And if that's too much, then you can also just stay still. And then coming back through center, let's turn the hands around so fingers point forward. One hand at a time, let's flip the palm up, fingers point towards your right knee. If that's not enough for you, you can do both at the same time, or we can do just one at a time. And so if you did one at a time, let's flip the right hand back to normal and then turn your left palm up. and then slowly coming back to tabletop. Tuck the toes. Let's make our way back to a downward facing dog. This might feel super tight for now, but we're going to walk it out. So bending and straightening the legs, pedaling out the feet, maybe shaking out the head, and finding a lot of movement here. Now, as you breathe in, let's stop moving, find stillness, and just try to squeeze navel back towards the spine. Lengthen through the back body as much as you can. And as you breathe out, let's bring both knees down on the mat, untuck the toes. And we're going to slightly tuck the tailbone. Arms are just out in front of you, arms stay straight. An imaginary block between the hands, now this is a great time if you had a block if you wanted to use it you could just hold it as you breathe in let's reach the arms above the head and make sure you're not going into a back bend keep the tailbone tucked keep squeezing the lower ribs in and then exhale let's lower 
Inhale, reach. So arms are shoulder distance apart. Exhale, lower. For three. Two. And one. And exhale, release. Let's come on the toes. So tuck the toes under. Here, hands can be on the mat or on blocks if you have them. Let's start to lean back and we're going to try to lift the knees as slowly as possible and then ground the heels. So here we're really working on ankle mobility. And then we're going to do the opposite. Let's lift the heels, lean back, knees, touch the floor. Good. And it's okay if you don't have that full range of motion. It's something that we build up towards. So if the heels aren't touching the floor or if you find yourself having to lift the hips, that's completely okay. We all start somewhere. So as long as you keep showing up and putting in the work, you're going to notice some significant differences over a few weeks. And yes, a few weeks, not a few days. It does take time. Good. Next time your heels are grounded, let's pause here, halfway lift, inhale. So it's okay if the knees are still a little bit bent. Exhale, let's fold forward. Two more times, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Now let's heel toe the feet apart twice, toes point out, heels point in, bend the knees, malasana, yogi squat. Hands at the heart space. Feel free to shift your weight from one foot to the other. Good. And here, what we want to avoid doing is rounding and slouching in the shoulders. So actively pull the shoulders back and down your spine and then reach up through the crown of the head. Good. Now let's release the contact between the elbows and the knees. And we're going to look towards the left you want to turn your whole body to the left. To right knee touches the floor. You're on the inner arch of your right foot. And then let's come back through center. And then the left foot, turn to the right. And come back. Good. So keeping the toes flexed. So now the inner side is on the mat. Outer blade is lifted. And left. And let's pause here, bring your hands down, let's sit down on the mat, and a little step forward with both feet. Let's stay nice and upright. Hands can be in the air or on the mat if you need that extra support. Let's bring both knees to the left, so they're bent about 90 degrees. Now leading with the right, let's lift the right knee, and then drop the left knee. Turn to face the right. Lead with the left. Right knee turns in. Face the left. Lead with the right. Good. And you can keep doing this. If you want to add something extra, let's lift the hips. Exhale, lower. Lead with the right. Left knee follows. And lift the hips. And if it's too hard, you can bring that left foot in closer. So bending the left knee a little bit more, for example. Good. Lifting to the left, go over to the right. You can do this at your own pace and it's better to do it a little bit slower than too fast and rushing through the motions. One more time on each side. Good, and then let's come back through center. Hold both outer blades of the feet. Let's take a Boat pose, so very active. If the legs are bent and the toes are flexed, that's also completely fine. Just trying to find your balance here. Legs bent or straight, let's hold for three, two, one, release. See if you can lift your arms above your head for five, four, three, two, and one. Cross the shins, plant the hands, high plank. Now from here, Moving into a little bit of shoulders, we're going to shrug the shoulders. So lowering the shoulders, retracting, and then protracting, rounding that upper back. So leaning forward, slouching in the shoulders a bit, 
and then round. For three, two, and one. Lower the knees or keep them lifted. Let's come all the way down to the belly. Baby Cobra, inhale, lift. Exhale to lower. Again, inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. One more, breathe in. And release. Tuck the toes, hands underneath the shoulders. Let's either come through tabletop or plank into downward facing dog. On your next inhale, right leg rises. Let's try to keep that right hip closed. Hold here. Actively lift for three, two, and one. Right knee to right elbow or shoulder. Inhale, send it back. Exhale, knee to right elbow. Inhale, send it back. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Let's step the right foot on the outside of the right hand. Ground your left heel and come into a 90 degree skandhasana. So we're not fully bent on that right leg. Now breathing in, let's straighten the right leg and flex the right toes. Exhale, hands to the heart space, bend the right knee 90 degrees. Inhale, straighten the right leg, reach the arms up. Exhale, bend. Inhale, straighten. Now exhale, bend all the way down. Skandasana, flexing your left toes. And let's hold. Good. Now let's see if maybe with or without the hands we can sit down and turn the right knee in without holding. So just rolling on the inner arch of the foot. Now with or without the help of the hands, lift the right knee. Come back to Skandasana and then straighten the right leg. Exhale, rebend all the way down. Skandasana, sit down, turn the right knee in. Lift the right knee, bring your weight into your right foot, straighten the right leg. One more time. And moving slow, feel free to use your hands or maybe to sit on a block or a pillow just to make the distance a little bit less great, especially for this Last part down here. Inhale, straighten the legs. Reverse triangle, right arm reaches up and over. And then exhale, let's cartwheel the hands down. Breathe in here. Exhale, let's lower the left knee. Anjanasana. Lift the arms above the head. Same thing as when we were sitting on our heels. Try not to let the lower ribs flare out. Here you want to feel the stretch in the front of the left hip. Squeeze the left glute a lot. Now as you breathe out, fingertips come down to the mat. And then let's start to pull the hips back, but make sure you keep reaching through the crown of the head. So if that means maybe straightening the leg a little bit less, that's fine. And then re-bend the right knee. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. Inhale, straighten, exhale, bend. Inhale, straighten, exhale, bend the right knee, plant the hand, step back, high plank, chaturanga, lower halfway, knees can assist, and then we meet in downward facing dog. Left leg rises, inhale, hold, lift up as high as you can for three, two, one, and then left knee, left elbow for three, two, and one. Step your left foot on the outside of the left hand. Ground the right heel, lift the chest, come into a 90 degree skandasana. Inhale, straighten the left leg. See if you can flex your left toes. Exhale, re-bend the left knee. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. Inhale, straighten. Now exhale, let's come all the way down. Flex the right toes. So you need to externally rotate that right hip. 
and then keep pushing your left knee out. Don't let it cave in. Make sure you're pushing that pinky toe down on the mat. Good. Now with or without the help of the hands, let's sit down. Maybe you're sitting on a pillow or block and turn the left knee in. So it's okay if the left butt cheek is lifted and you don't have to point the toes. Let's keep it flexed. Lift the left knee. Let's come all the way back up. Good. And then all the way down at your own pace, maybe using the hands to support your journey. And moving slowly and mindfully. And we meet in star pose and then right hand comes on the right leg, reverse triangle, breathe in. Exhale, cartwheel the hands all the way down, drop the right knee, Anjanasana, reach the arms up for a three. So really important to squeeze the right glute and to not dump weight in the lower back. So we're lifting up and out of the waist. Now, as you breathe out, fingertips come down on the mat. And then let's pull the hips back. Keep your back straight. So if you feel like straightening the left leg more makes you round your spine, just stop a little bit before that point. And let's re-bend the knees and straighten. Add for three. Two. And one. Rebend your left knee, plant the hands, step the left foot back, optional chaturanga, or just back to downward facing dog. Now on your next inhale, right leg rises. Exhale, right knee to right elbow. Now let's pause here. Bring your right knee down to your right wrist and then as high up as you can towards the elbow. Two more times, lower and lift. Lower and lift. Let's step the right foot on the outside of the right hand. Reach your right arm forward and then exhale. Let's touch the left knee with the right hand. Inhale, reach forward and then circle the right arm up. Exhale, right arm reaches towards the left knee. Inhale, reach forward, circle the right arm up. Exhale, right arm reaches towards the left knee. Now reach your right arm forward, and then let's kick that left leg through, and if you slide it on the floor, that's fine. So kicking the left leg through the left hand and the right foot. Step your left foot back, and then let's cross your left knee behind your right ankle. Slowly turn to face the long side of your mat, so pivoting towards the right. Let's bring that right ankle directly on top of the left knee. Left heel can stay pretty much touching the right hip. Right shin is parallel to the long side of the mat. Deep breath in here, lengthen your spine. Exhale, let's fold forward, hinging at the hip. So again, making sure we're not rounding here. We're always trying to lift the chest forward and lengthen the spine. Let's take one more breath here. And then inhale, slowly rise up. Right foot plants in front of your left leg. Both hands come down on the mat. Let's extend the left leg back and up, standing splits. Right now you can either stay there, really nice stretch for the hamstrings, trying to keep that left hip closed. If you want to take it a little further and because why not? It's always fun. Let's take a few hops to handstand without swinging this left leg. So try to challenge yourself to only use your right leg. And again, you can stay down here in standing splits or a few hops, maybe bending that right knee into the chest. And then we all meet back in our standing splits. The left foot will step to the back of the mat. Right arm reaches up to the sky. And then let's pivot onto the outer blades of the feet, 
Right arm reaches over your right ear. Big side stretch here through the right side. Good. Let's pivot all the way around into Skandasana. Right knee is bent, left leg is straight. And then as slow as possible, staying as low to the ground as you can, switch to Skandasana on your left leg. Pivot to the back of the mat, lunge. And then let's step back, high plank, chaturanga. All the way back to downward facing dog. Going to do all that on the left side now. Inhale, left leg reaches up high. Exhale, left knee to left elbow, hold. And then bring your left knee down to your left wrist. And then up to the elbow or shoulder for three. Two. One, left foot steps on the outside of the left hand. Now left arm reaches forward. Exhale, left hand reaches underneath the body, touch your right knee. Inhale, circle the left arm up, open up the chest. Hmm. Exhale, left hand reaches towards the right knee. Inhale, circle and open. Exhale, left hand reaches towards the right knee. Inhale, circle and open. Exhale, left hand reaches forward. Now let's step the right foot forward. So you can either kick or slide it. Try to keep the right foot in the air as you kick through. And then let's step the right foot back. And then slowly cross your right knee behind your left ankle. And let's pivot to the left, sitting facing the long side of your mat. Left ankle crosses over the right knee, flex the toes. Take a deep breath in, lengthen the spine. Exhale to hinge forward. Now to progress this shape, you can bring both legs. So having both shins parallel, just depending on how you feel, but make sure you did the same on both sides. So if you come back to this class, you know that you can go a level further here. Slowly, let's rise back up. Look towards the top of your mat, which is now at the back of your mat. Left foot plants. Standing splits, right leg rises. And really think of your right leg as starting from the glute. So you engage the right glute a lot to lift the right leg up higher. Don't just think about the leg itself. You can stay there or you can work on a few hops to handstand only thinking about the left leg. So the right leg just keeps lifting up high and we're just going to try to bend the left knee into the chest. So without kicking too much with the right leg. And you will find that one side is much easier than the other. All right, we meet back in our standing splits and then let's step the right foot back. Left arm reaches up and pivot onto the outer blades of the feet. And let's just stretch there. Left arm reaches over the left ear. So you're even pushing your hips up a little bit higher, trying to get that whole deep stretch on the left side. And now from here, let's bring the left hand down, pivot into Skandasana, side lunge on the left leg, and then staying as low as possible, Skandasana to the right. Pivot to the right. So we're in a lunge, framing the right foot with both hands. Step back, high plank, chaturanga. All the way back to downward facing dog. Let's take a deep breath in. Exhale through the mouth, let it go. And we're going to walk all the way up to the top of the mat. Slow little steps. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to fold and then articulating the spine one vertebra at a time, bend the knees, let's slowly roll up to standing. Arms reach up above the head. Exhale, hands to the heart space. And let's come high on the toes. 
Exhale, lower the heels. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift and hold. Imagine you're sliding down a wall. So try to keep your back nice and upright. Slowly bend the knees. Bring your hips to your heels. And again, lift all the way up. Exhale, slowly lower. Last time, lift. And lower all the way down. Good. Now see if you can do this without using the hands. Start to lean forward, bring your heels down on the mat. And then very slowly sit down, trying not to bring the hands behind you. Good. One vertebra at a time. Let's lower all the way down to the mat. And we'll just pause right here. So the upper back is lifted. Try to squeeze the navel in and hold for five. Three. Two. And one, come all the way down. Let's bring both feet very close to the hips. So feet are hip width distance apart for bridge pose, but we're going to add the arms as well. So hands start by your hips, and then as you breathe in one vertebra at a time, lift your spine, and at the same time, reach your arms above the head. And then exhale, one vertebra at a time, lower, hands come back to the hips. Inhale to lift. So you're massaging your shoulder blades slightly. Exhale to lower. Inhale, lift. And exhale, lower. Inhale, one more time, lift. Now just bring your hands by your hips. Interlace the hands behind your lower back if that feels nice. And roll the shoulder blades a little closer together. Five breaths. And releasing the hands one vertebra at a time, lower back down. Let's hug the knees into the chest and take a deep breath in. Lift your forehead up to the knees. Hold and squeeze for three, two, one. Exhale, release, Shavasana. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose. And then exhale through the mouth, let it go. One more deep inhale. And release. Allow yourself a moment of rest. Noticing how your body feels lying down here. Maybe you feel like you've expanded a little or grown a couple more centimeters. Notice the breath and make sure that you have let go of the control over the breath. And you're just observing it flow through the body, lifting and lowering the chest as if your whole body is breathing, pulsing. Stay in Shavasana if you have the time. Otherwise, slowly make your way out, taking the time to stretch, and we will meet in a comfortable seat. Sitting nice and upright and noticing if it feels maybe a little bit more comfortable to sit upright right now. Now that we've opened the whole body, 
Let's take a deep breath in, reach the arms above the head. And then exhale, hands to the heart space. And as you go forth into the rest of your day, may you have peace in your thoughts, peace in your words, and in your heart. From my heart to yours, namaste. Thank you for joining me for this mobility yoga class. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that it was accessible to you no matter what level you have. It is definitely a great one filled with loads of really awesome tools and exercises that you can always come back to. And no matter if you're a beginner or advanced, it's important to keep working on these things. And you'll notice that it makes a huge difference to the rest of your yoga practice when you have that understanding and freedom to move in your body. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Remember to like and subscribe and I will see you next week.